Hi, my name is Jane and I work for a voter business advisory. Just wanting to uh, run you through a quick demo on how to use HubDoc. Um, now I know a lot of our clients are a little bit scared or put off by HubDoc, so I just wanted to run through this uh, to give you a little bit more confidence in using it and to actually show you how good it can be and how helpful it can be. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, when you log in, you should see a screen something like this. Now, you probably won't have any files here. You might have this quick start guide. Um, yeah, and that might be all that's there. Uh, so um, I should make a note that if you are a, a zero subscriber, if you have a starter, standard or premium subscription, uh, you get HubDoc included with your subscription at no extra charge. Uh, hence why I want to do this video for you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, when you log in, you'll get this screen. Um, if it's not already connected to Zero, you have the option here uh, to say connect to Zero. Now, there obviously are other options here, but I'm only going to show you how it links with Zero today. Uh, so, firstly, uh, I'll run you through some settings and some different ways on how you can import files into HubDoc. So you want to go into this little cog up here. Uh, so in the past, um, as you can see here, HubDoc did have some stuff that was automated, uh, but they've stopped that, unfortunately. Uh, perhaps they had a few glitches with that. Uh, so let's go to suppliers. Now you can see here, I have already sent this demo company one invoice, uh, and I haven't actually set up this supplier. Uh, so if we click on this, um, so yeah, any invoice you send through to HubDoc, it will automatically create a supplier for it. Um, and then let's say you get three invoices from a voter bookkeeping, then it'll say you've got three documents sitting there and, and so on, it'll just keep growing. Uh, so if we go through this, uh, you can notify of a duplicate. Uh, this I've, I've used this many times before, um, especially um, if I'm doing bookkeeping for someone and uh, they send you, yeah, things that they think they haven't sent, but they have in fact sent through already. Uh, yeah, HubDoc will alert you uh, that this is a possible duplicate and then you can just archive or, or delete the file that you don't need. Um, the supplier due date, uh, this is obviously if you've got recurring invoices for a, a supplier, um, after the invoice date, you can, you know, set up a, a rule as such to say this invoice is always due seven days after or 14 days after their bill date. Uh, so you can set that up or you can leave that blank. Uh, or you can tick use document due date if it's available. So I'll also show you that yeah, HubDoc's quite intelligent and it can actually pull information from the invoice such as the bill date or the due date. Uh, so you could tick that. I would probably tick that. Uh, auto pay, that's quite handy too. So uh, this won't um, automatically deduct from your bank account or anything, but if you have recurring invoices, you can just say, yep, this is tick to auto pay. Um, it might be like a phone invoice or, you know, if you've got a monthly Telstra account and it automatically debits, uh, that's something you'd put on auto pay because it's not something you have to remember to pay. Uh, it automatically deducts from your bank account or your credit card. Uh, yeah, these, these are pretty self-explanatory, but email alerts, send me an email when a new document is retrieved and send me an email five days before a bill is due. Uh, so you can, it's up to you if you want to use those or not. Um, I probably wouldn't use those. Uh, I'd probably just use my zero file uh, to uh, re remember when to pay bills. And this we or would always want that integrated with zero. Um, and that would usually have been ticked. Um, but because I haven't actually set up the or put in the invoice for a voter bookkeeping, uh, we can go through some stuff here. Um, I might actually show you on the next um, 
on the invoice on how to do that. But if you, hang on, we'll go back. We'll finish with this. I will go into the invoice now. So if I show you here, basically what was there is what was in this supplier area. So it's the same thing. So whatever you set up off to the side here will transfer over to um, the supplier account. So let's just go through setting up um, an invoice. So you want to make sure everything with a red star uh, is filled out. So you can either leave this part blank or in this case, we could just put invoice. And as you can see, it's automatically pulled that it's from a voter bookkeeping. That's great. It's automatically pulled the invoice number. It's automatically pulled the date and the due date and the total amount. And it's already uh, got the GST on expenses, which is all correct. Uh, so when you're first starting out, it's always good to make sure that it is getting the invoice data correctly. Uh, now, because this is a zero invoice, it has pulled all the information perfectly. Uh, but yeah, some uh, more obscure accounting software programs might be, you know, not quite as good at pulling the information. Uh, so if we go further down, you will see the zero here that we need to configure. Uh, so you generally want to click Save Configuration. Uh, the only reason you wouldn't want to tick that is if you've got a, one particular supplier. Uh, let's say they sell a whole heap of different items to you. So um, it could be, let's just say it's an office supply company, um, but you buy cleaning products and you buy paper off them every month. Um, so you might put cleaning products to your cleaning account and your paper to your stationary account. Um, and that's going to vary every month. So you probably wouldn't want that save configuration ticked. Um, in this case, with a bookkeeping invoice, it, invoice it's always going to be accounting expenses. So uh, you would want to hit the save configuration. Um, so publish as, uh, as we can see, this is a purchase, but you can uh, do all these other ones as well. Um, credit note is quite a common one uh, that we do as well. The status, um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, if we're just starting out with a, with a particular supplier, uh, you might want to leave that on draft or um, yeah, probably leave it on draft until you know that it's actually pulling all that information correctly. Um, and yeah, you, you wouldn't want to tick auto sync at this stage either um, until you know that it's pulling the data properly. Um, after that, and after, you know, HubDoc's pulled, uh, HubDoc has put through a lot of the, those invoices and you can trust that it's working correctly, uh, then we would want to hit auto sync and in, you could even go awaiting payment. So that'll feed all automatically through to zero and it will match up with the transaction in your bank feed if you've paid that invoice. Uh, so it's basically like a set and forget situation, uh, which can, it's really handy and can save you a lot of time. Uh, but yeah, just make sure that it's doing everything correctly before uh, going to auto, auto sync and awaiting payment. Uh, the contact, uh, that pulls all your contacts from your company, uh, from your zero file. Uh, so it's a voter bookkeeping. I probably won't be in here, but so a voter bookkeeping isn't there, but just for this example, we'll just put it under a voter, but Ideally, you would want that to be a voter bookkeeping proprietary limited. Um, 
B. Obviously, that name is already in the zero file. So just for this example, we'll use that for now. Um, if we leave that as single, that's just pulling this line here through. And the account code is going to be accounting, accountancy fees. I don't think we've got a bookkeeping fee, but yeah, you might want to put that under bookkeeping, however your accounts are set up. But accountancy fees is quite a common one with zero. Uh, you would type in the description, bookkeeping monthly. Uh, if you want to be quick, though, you could just leave that, um, leave that blank, but that will that will automatically yeah pull through to zero and show basically as this invoice displays here will display in zero as a bill with that description. If you leave that blank, uh, it'll either be nothing or it will say it might say something about HubDoc and a particular number on there. Uh, and then, yeah, once that's done, all you have to do is hit publish uh, and that will feed through to zero in your bills. So after a minute or two, you'll be able to see that in bills in zero with this PDF attached to it, uh, which is pretty handy. So it can be totally paperless uh, and the bill is kept within zero. You can also do multiple lines. Uh, so instead of having single, uh, you can do multiple uh, and this is obviously handy if you've got an invoice that needs to be allocated to different accounts. So exactly how you'd enter a bill into zero, <clears throat> you would type in the description, quantity, And it doesn't automatically select the tax rate. So you've just got to select that. And then you might have something else. Also select the tax rate. And then you just hit save and close. And it automatically populates there. Um, another thing I can show you is instead of having this as the tax rate GST on expenses, which is correct, you can do an extracted amount. So you can manually type in the GST amount. And the account would be the same as what the invoice is. and then you can generate that. So most of the time you don't need to use that GST on expenses will be fine. But I know as an example, Telstra invoices, the GST is never or very rarely 10% of the net amount. Uh, so if you do the extracted amount and enter it in, uh, every time you do a Telstra invoice, if you save those configurations, uh, it'll extract automatically um, and yeah, automatically populate the GST amount correctly. Uh, yeah, so that's all you need to know about multiple lines and yeah, extracting the GST. It's probably good to make a note that over this side where we've got this invoice, uh, this little exclamation mark, all that means is that you've got an invoice there to review. And once you've processed it and um, put it through to zero here, published it in zero, that will turn into a green tick um, and it will go into the archive folder. It's also good to note that uh, some items that you upload to HubDoc can actually go to this failed section. Now, if it does fail, you can still process it it just means that most of the data hasn't pulled from the bill and um, gone into the details on this side here. Uh, so you just have to do everything manually. That might happen for invoices that are just an email and not a PDF or um, 
items that are from a mobile phone, uh, strange file types, things like that uh, will often go into the failed section. But you won't ever see it in a processing or reviewed. It will just go into failed. Uh, so it's good to double check that. Okay, so now I'm going to just show you some ways on how to get your invoices to HubDoc. Uh, you want to click on the little cog on the top right. And we want to go to organization. Now, you the best way to do it, um, which I yeah do all the time, is you'll have your HubDoc email here. So what you can do is copy that. Um, email address uh, and put put that into the two box in your uh, email browser uh, and the best way to do it is to just forward invoices as you receive them from your supplier um, I'd probably recommend taking out all the uh, text from the email and just leaving that PDF attachment there um, otherwise yeah like I said it could go into that failed section which sometimes is easy to miss uh, so that is the easiest way to send documents to HubDoc. Another handy thing you can do with this email is if you do have regular invoices coming into your email account, uh, you can set up a rule on your uh, email browser. Um, Outlook is probably the best one for setting up rules. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Probably just Google. Uh, setting up a rule in Outlook. Uh, yeah, and then what it, what it will do is if you set that rule to automatically forward to this email, uh, once again, it's a set and forget type thing. So you won't even see that come into your inbox. It'll just come into your inbox and then automatically forward out to HubDoc. Uh, and then better still, if you set that up to uh, auto sync and then awaiting payment for zero, it'll go straight from your email all the way through to zero and then ready for reconciling, uh, yeah, which is super easy. And one last thing to note is that uh, every new supplier that you send an invoice to HubDoc from uh, will go under this uploads folder and will automatically create a subfolder with that supplier name on it. Uh, so yeah, some of our clients have hundreds of these folders uh, because yeah, HubDoc automatically creates a folder for each supplier that you have. Uh, so if you ever wanna go back and try and find an invoice, uh, you can go through this uploads folder. Alternatively, you can uh, type in the search bar up here um, for the supplier. And you can see it there. Uh, so that's all um, I'd like to cover with you today. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel uh, to get uh, more helpful videos um, regarding zero training, accounting and HubDoc. Thank you and we'll hopefully see you soon.